Welcome everybody to another edition of WCW 2005 here in DW 2020 as it's the part of the part, time for the new pay-per-view cycle as we go on from Rising Sun Revolution that happened last night in game on to Wrestle War which is a Nitro only pay-per-view but let's get rolling to Nitro live from I believe uh where were we yeah I'll figure it out in a second anyway let's get rolling to Nitro so um yeah and I got Zenner in beautiful uh New Jersey so Eric Bischoff comes out to the ring first to a mixed pop because you know Bischoff's been basically playing the kind of just looking for ratings, you know, GM the whole time since the split, especially since at the beginning. But, you know, he officially says, you know, last night was a great night for WCW. You know, and he, even he has to say that as, you know, we're proving we're an internationally wide ranging company. I want a great show in front of close to 40,000. But, you know, every big pay per view is bigger and better. And that's why I'm happy to say, you know, Wrestle War will be a Nitro only pay per view. And I'm glad right now to bring out the number one contender is going to be taking on Rob Van Dam, the world champion at Wrestle War. Canyon. Big pop as Canyon comes out to the ring. Uh, you know, crowd is, you know, um, you know, big pop, you know, got a big one for off Eddie Guerrero a couple weeks back. And which now is the officially the number one contender. You know, um, and Canyon basically says, you know, he's ready to take back his world championship. And then he's got to face the whole effing show at Wrestle War to prove that it's really true that nobody's better than Canyon. And after Wrestle War, nobody in this business will be able to deny that he's the number one wrestler in this company and the number one wrestler in the world. When he has that world title back around his waist where it belongs. Q Eddie Guerrero, of course, coming out and says, and he's like he's he's up the top of the ramp, and he's just pissed. Like he has a mic and says, Wait, wait, wait. This is BS Bischoff. Last week, you promised me if I didn't get involved in the match, that I get my rematch against this guy. And now you're putting him in a world title match above me? You're like giving me a damn opportunity. I knew this is what was going to happen, Eric. I knew it. What, when I came back, you would never let me get Rice up to the top without putting everything in front of me. And Bischoff says, look, Eddie, I promised you another match against Cannon. I never promised to be for anything. He beat you. He's an normal contender. Without question. And Eddie's, at this time, down the ring. He's in the ring. Like, look, this Bischoff, I only signed a contract with this company because it was promised that I'd get my right opportunities. And I was a world champion before. I will be world champion again. But you're putting this guy in my way again because you think he can beat me just because he got lucky a few times. Well, I'll go through him, but also go through you too. And Bish Eddie sort of steps up to Bish Bischoff. And Kenny like basically gets between and says, look, Bischoff, if you want the match next week, give him a match next week on Nitro, okay? But here's the thing. Eddie, if you beat next week, fine. I'll talk to WC committee, and I'll agree that you deserve to be in the match as a triple threat. Because I still reserve my title shot. But if you beat me, but if I beat you, our business is done. You're going to stay out of my business. I won't get become world champion again. And that's that. But there's a stare down as Eddie then nods and says, Look, Canyon, real fighting values means I'm happy to kick your ass again and become the WC world champion once again. And there's nothing you, and he's pointing to Bischoff, or you can do about it. So Big Pop, 99, as we move forward, you know, basically setting up that. At the moment, at Russell War, it's Canyon versus Rob Van Dam for the title. And, but might be later on, if Eddie beats Canyon next week, it's going to be a triple threat. And also, throughout this uh, promo, it's all set up. It's going to be a tag match tonight as RVD will be here, team with Canyon, take on Eddie Burrow and Jason Jett. So this gets a 99 because these guys are freaking great. And then we have Jeremy Borash catching up with Jonathan Toro. You know, Borash asked him about what happened last week, where O'Hare kind of embarrassed Toro once again. And, you know, obviously, Toro is not happy about this, and he says, Oh, here, you try to deny us. You try to deny me, my reign overall that I can see. But the reality is you will not stop me or my Roman Empire. You've gotten lucky a few times, but you are nothing but a road bump. And one or the other, you will kneel at my feet and accept your place as my subject. So again, decent heel for Roman, continue to, you know, despite the fact that oh, has gotten his towards number every time, he's still, you know, as he's, he wants to be king of the Roman Empire, thinks he can take off, you know, take on O'Hare and beat him and prove that he's above him. We'll just have to see about that as this gets a 73. Good stuff. And then we have basically the truth coming out of the ring, doing a rap, which I'm not going to do, waiting for us, which opponent, either it's going to be Le Pan or um, Poland. And this time it's Ray Le Pan coming out of the ring along with Don Marie as we ready for our television title match, our first match of the night, as this gets a 70. 
And overall, this is a very solid match. You know, decent match back and forth. You know, Lepen gets used a little bit of his power and his brawling. Free fights back in his, his moves. You know, uh, you know his uh, the little spinning neck breaker. Uh, you know, the big you know modified axe kick throws Lepen around. Donry tries to get involved, but Truth is ready for, and Lepen and Donry actually you know knocks Donry off the ropes. Uh, Truth takes over, hits a few big moves. Uh, eventually, Lepen tries to go back on offense, but Truth. Boom, hits Truth or Consequences right in the middle of the ring. And with to go, he gets the big pinfall victory and his first defense of the television title over Ray LePen here on Nitro. As it gets a 72, Truth gets a 64, later Ray LePen gets a 65. But as Truth is celebrating, out comes the tank, Tolan, ready to attack Le- the Truth. But the Truth is ready for him, um, you know, avoids the, you know, running Lariat, hits Truth, uh, uh, hits Tolan with a big uh, belly to belly. Rolls out of the ring with TV title, holding it, you know, pointing him, you know, as Tolan, Le Pen, and Don Ring all recover. As I'm just put over, you know, Truth has gotten over one obstacle, but now he has to face Tank Tolan next week on Nitro, as this gets a 70. Solid stuff. And then we go backstage, where Matt Seidel's, you know, backstage, doing backstage stuff, and Crystal say, you know, basically confronts him and says, You're the champion, but I deserve a title shot. I've defeated you. I... In tag team combat, I won singles matches, so I want you in that ring. Because you refused all my generous offers. So now that you don't accept my gold, you have to accept my violence as I take your title off of you. And my cell basically agrees to the match, saying, you know, he's happy to face Osei and prove why he's the cruiserweight champion and why you, Osei, have to try to pay people off. So a bit of a stare down as we set up basically a match next week for the cruiserweight title between Prince Osei and Matt Saito, as this gets a 46. And after that, we have Brother Ray coming down to the ring to a big pop, as he says basically, you know, I know somebody signed up for a fight, I don't know who it was, Fisher just told me somebody did sign up, that, that, that open contract, so let's get down to it. And then, Carol Morley, how comes Jarrett to a big heel pop, as he says, no, wait, no, no, slap nuts. I didn't chose, sign up for this match, but somebody truly chosen is ready to kick your ass and prove that he is worthy. And out of nowhere, Mark Dundrak comes out of the crowd and attacks Brother Ray from behind, and the match is on. 95, good stuff, because Jarrett's really over, Brother Ray's good in, on the mic, and building everything up. And then we have the actual match, which, you know, is not the best match in the world, but a pretty solid match, as, um, you know, basically, you know, Jindrak is on offense from the start, but eventually Brother Ray, you know, fights back because he's Brother Ray. Uh, you know, hit, hits a few big moves, hits a big power slam, goes for um, the big full, full Nelson bomb, but Jindrak goes low. Uh, Jindrak goes back on offense, you know, hits a few, you know, big power moves, sidewalk slam, spine buster, uh, goes for a big lariat from the corner, but Brother Ray gets gets out of the way. Brother Ray's back on offense. Um, simply Johnny Devine comes down, distracts the ref, and that gives Jeff Jarrett enough time to come in, whomp Brother Ray with the Guitar of Doom. Jindrak is then able to hit his pick up Brother Ray, hit the mark of perfection, and quick the victory, 1-2-3, right here on Nitro. And a big win for Mark Jindrak with help from, of course, his chosen leader, Jeff Jarrett. As this gets a 70, Brother Ray gets an 81, Mark Jindrak gets, gets a 74. Short match, I'm guessing, and plus, yeah, I'm going to guess short match, and yeah, short match length, which I expected, but, you know, get more setting things up here. As post match, Jarrett and Jindrak, like, you know, beat down Brother Ray, as Jarrett, you know, basically sells, don't ask for a fight because more will come to you, Brother Ray. And in more unlike you isn't ready for the outcome. They walk out as he, he lots of heel heat, as the officers, you know, put over the fact you know, chosen few, are back in action, and they look to be taken out Brother Ray tonight as this gets a 68, solid stuff. And then we have basically a triple threat cruiserweight match just to get these guys on the show. You know, this is basically, you know, high spots match. Everybody hitting their high spots for a couple minutes. Hidaka hitting his kicks. Robert's trying to take people down on people's submissions. Lynn doing a bit of his flying around and some, you know, decent cruiser power moves. But in the end, with a big, like, basically, um, Lynn goes for the cradle pile driver. But Robert suplexes him from behind. Hidaka is down. Robert's locks in the stretch plum. And Lynn on the outside. Hidaka taps out. And Reckless Roberts gets a big one here on Nitro. Solid match, as you know, these guys aren't the most over folks, but, you know, solid stuff back and forth, as Lynn gets a 50, Reckless Roberts gets a 55, Ahitaka gets a 43, as Roberts gets a big win here, and then celebrates to the boost of the crowd as he gets a 43. 
as you know, put over, you know, he has a bright future here as part of the WCW Cruiserweight division. And then, uh, coming back, Goldberg music hits, and he comes out to a big pop from the crowd. Um, as he takes Mike and says, you know, for the past few weeks, since he showed up, Don Fry and his buddy, Rain Savage, has said, I'm more worried about public appearances than getting in this ring and fighting. Here's reality, guys. I'm the man for a reason. And that means I've got a lot of my plate. Fun of this country, fun of the world. Going to visit sick, sick kids, going to public appearances, autographing stuff for the fans. But that does not mean I'm not still a fighter. That does not mean so I'm still the man. Because Fry, I'm not denying you're a tough SOP. But you never could do what I do. And you never done what I did. And Savage, you failed at being the guy over and over. And now you're so bitter over it that you've brought in Donnie Boyd to try to kick my ass. So Fry, if you want to be next, that's fine. Walk in, in the Wrestle War, Wrestle War, and you'll see why I'm the man. So promo basically setting up that it's going to be Goldberg Fry at Wrestle War. And Goldberg basically accept the challenge as this gets a 95. Fun stuff. And then, you know, basically cutting backstage, we have, uh, you know, Boris catching up with the Chosen Few, basically asking them what happened there, you know, and, and says, you know, Gary basically says, you know, I love messing with the more like Brother Ray. See, Slapnuts tonight proved why you'll always be the bingo hall brute you started as. And Ray, my Chosen Few will rise to greatness above you. We've been pushed aside for the past few weeks. You know, busy with our own personal stuff, but now we're back and better than ever. And tonight, we've proven you're nothing but an example of what happens when you're not part of the chosen few. So I saw a promo here, setting things up as this gets an 81. And then uh, we basically come back to commercial. Borash with is worth Ninko Ninkyo. And this is sort of your basic heel promo, you know, Stacey putting over how Dom and her men have been so far since they've restructured themselves under her guidance, and that if Heart Legacy want to fight, they can bring anybody as, in as backup, because her men will destroy them and prove why they're the future of tag team wrestling here in World Championship Wrestling, and Heart Legacy's are yesterday's news already. 79, again, decent heel promo from Stacy, setting up her men and basically putting over, you know, it's going to be Heart Dynasty versus Yang and Kaz sooner than you'd think. And then we have basically Macias, um, in this match that hasn't happened in a while where he just kills somebody. Um, I mean, basically, he's been stuck in the tag division, and then it was in a long feud. So just reminding people that he's Macias and he can kill people. And yeah, Macias just throws this JC Ryder job around. A little over two minutes, he hits, he hits the crucifix power bomb. One, two, three. Like, nothing to it. Macias gets a 83. JC Ryder gets a 12. And yeah, this is just a complete, like, killification. And then after, the, you know, the job rolls to the outside. Macias is in there as Morningstar rolls in and takes the mic. And he says, Oof, okay, interesting that he lost here. Anyway, um, Raven, you talk of tribulation and revelation and all that you know, and all that you think you see. The reality is you know nothing except the depravities and illusions that race through your adult mind that believe make you some sort of dark prophet. You are not a prophet, but neither am I. See, I am only a messenger, as I hear only the message, and you stood in its way for too long. And the message's monster stands ready to destroy you once and for all, no matter your desperate attempts to bring it to its side. This is one last warning to you, Raven. Stay the side or become nothing but bloody wreckage. Decent promo. Morningstar rolled badly, unfortunately, but still 77 isn't bad at all. And then we go backstage, where basically our you know, we see RVD, you know, saying, you know, he got here on a, a red eye flight from Tokyo last night, but he's still ready to wrestle. Um, you know, and team with Canyon, and Canyon you know, basically says, you know, he respects Van Dam for being the world champion for a reason, but, you know, he's ready to get back in that ring against Ralph Van Dam and prove that he's the best wrestler in the world, and he's happy to team with him tonight, but it's business after that, and a business between two wrestlers, great wrestlers, somebody has to lose, and Canyon knows it's not good to be him. R RV sort of says, man, I got off the first with you, and I'll have a great match, but, but there's a reason why I'm the whole effing show why I'm the world champion is because I'm the best in the world. And Canyon, you're great, but I'm just that much better. A bit of a stir down, then a handshake, and it looks like they're, they're on the same page, at least for tonight. As this gets 100, because these guys are both really over, really charismatic, and the crowd fucking loves them. And then we have the actual debut of Shane Helms and Titus Tonko as a team, as they, they take on Yashiro Tajiri and Chapa Guerrero, who are sort of lost in the morass of the mid-card, and this is a fun little back and forth match, like nothing 
too fancy. Like, you know, Titus gets to throw people around. You know, um, eventually Helms comes in, sort of plays heel in peril. Eventually gets, you know, Titus back in, who gets to, you know, throw people around. Uh, Tajiri and Chavo, like, try to hit some tag team moves, but Tomo gets to throw him around. Helms comes in, you know, does his, you know, cocky heel stick, hits a super kick late on Chavo for near, near pinfall, goes for the Nightmares on Helm Street. Oh, no, hits it on Teacher. He goes for the Nightmare on Helm Street. Teacher gets out of the way. Chavo comes in. He's a house on fire on Helm. Eventually, he goes for the Brain Buster. Helms goes low, hits a quick DDT, tags in Tomka, who comes in, hits the hits a big boot, and his finisher to keep it, pick up pinball victory for the heels here as Helms and, Helms and Tomko make a successful debut here at on Nitro as this gets a 71. As they get the pin in a little over 11 minutes. Tom only get, Tom only gets a 27 because he's still getting there. Helms is still great as he gets an 85. Chavo gets a 70 and Tajiri gets a 68. So again, not, not the great, greatest thing, but again, gotta build Tomko up and we'll see what they do in the tag team division from here. As post match, of course, they celebrate to the booze of the crowd as this gets a 70. And then we have our revolution in Japan recap, you know, focusing on, you know, Sting's big legendary master with, uh, Wishing Hashimoto, the women's tag title finals, the big main event between RVD and Monty Brown, and all the other fun matches that happened in Japan as the you know, as you know, the video puts over the replay, and of course, the DVD coming out sooner than later. Now it's time for our main event, as Eddie Guerrero teams up with Jason Jett to take on RVD and Canyon. And and this match is your very typical tag team main event. Uh, Jason just sort of there just to make up the numbers, and because honestly, he was sort of a good wrestler who's a heel who wasn't involved in anything directly and could have some fun stuff. And he basically, like you know, he gets he gets to play sort of the bump, the the guy that gets the bump for all of RVD to get Kanan's offense right at the start. You know, RVD and Kanan throw him around. There's even some fun double teams where actually Kanan hits a Kanan cutter early, then RVD hits a five star box splash, but Eddie makes a save at the last second. Eddie eventually comes in, like, you know, playing heel on both men. You know, Eddie gets a, uh, you know, hit Brawl with Canyon, but eventually, you know, they, they get broken apart. Then Eddie, you know, takes on RVD. Um, they get to have some fun, you know, Eddie going for a brain buster, but RVD sliding out of it. But then, uh, but then Eddie avoiding the rolling thunder. Um, Eddie trying to go for the blue thunder bomb, but RVD blocking it and then hitting his own solid suplex. RVD and Eddie fighting to the outside, can he a big tope? On both on Eddie, but also hitting RVD. Uh, eventually, Jason Jet trying to take advantage and go after RVD, but uh, RVD, you know, basically tossing him around. Uh, Eddie and Candy coming in to make the save, and eventually, as you'd expect, things break down all the way as Eddie and Kane start fighting to the top, and RVD then takes advantage on Jason Jet, hits the hits the you know uh, Van Damme backbreaker, rolling thunder up top, five star frog splash. As World Champion gets a pinball victory over Jason Jet in a little over 15 minutes. As this gets an 88, Cannon gets an 893, RVD gets a 90, Jet gets a 9066, Eddie gets a 92. Fun stuff, really good main event. Like, you know, Jet, you know, obviously, but knocked down a little bit, but there wasn't really anybody really to bring in for the heels team to make it a 90 for sure. But a big win here for RVD to end the show as he celebrates while Cannon and Eddie fight to the back. And overall, that show gives us a 91. Fun stuff. All right, and we're back. Um, so first, let's you know any interesting news. Um, Stacy Kubler, damn it, dang it, Stacy, why, why do you have to go off TV? Okay, I mean, I'll have to figure out something as far as that goes. Um, regardless, so Nitro, like I said, got a ninety-one. It also got two point one six million viewers. And Raw itself got a 92, and I got 2.42 million viewers. And just to go over stuff, because of course, remember, I'm booking the last, this is the basically the Go Home Nitro, or Go Home Raw, for WrestleMania, which I'm booking along with last week, so let's get over stuff. So we had a WrestleMania contract signing graphic tonight, but Edge making fun of Angle, then Team Angle coming out for 95. Then in a shockingly good match, Edge defeated Billy Gunn in a little over 7 minutes. And then he avoided a Team Angle beatdown. We had Regal and DDT coming in Richards backstage saying they have no partner. We had CM Punk in ring attacking Val Venus, getting 54. You know, TM Punk defeating uh, Val Venus's, you know, sometime partner Rikishi in a 63, then Val saving his partner. Then we had in a preview of the Survivors match, we had Jackie Gata and Cherry Slice defeating Veronica Vane and Amber James in a 56. Then we had the women going after each other. Then we had JBL stopping illegal immigrants from 
wait for it, Canada, to further, you know, the feud with Christian um, and, you know, to continue to set up their triple threat match at WrestleMania. Then a Triple H and Brock backstage before their tag team match later on. Then a preview of the four-way tag match at WrestleMania with the man's Caden Test, defeating Perry Saturn and Saddle Sheldon Benjamin. And then we had everybody fighting in a 50. We had a big show in Orton backstage. Then we had a reveal of Team Richard's partner, making his debut up from OVW, none other than Riku Constantino. But instead of him being his, like, kind of off-the-rails gay hairdresser gimmick, he's put over as a former American Gladiators competitor and just sort of a solid babyface. And they get the shock win over DDP and Will Regal in 67. Nope. People not happy about that, that dumb Dallas page. Then, uh... Three Quiz and Richards celebrate with Foley uh, as the entrance put over, you know, there is a six-man street fight count between these teams, and it looks like Rico will be the sixth man to take on the W, you know, not the WCW, but the top shelf team of DDP, Regal, and DDP, Regal, and uh, Scott Siner. Then we had a um, another WrestleMania in Los Angeles video as we had a sort of parody of the Princess Bride with Molly Holly as, you know, playing the princess, Paul Heyman playing, uh, oh god, uh, Vi- Vizio, uh, the inconceivable guy, whose name I forgot, the big Joe playing Andre's character, and Randy Orton playing, um, the Dread Pirate Roberts, because honestly, I couldn't think of anybody better uh, on the roster. And then in our main event, we had Triple H and Brock Lesnar getting the win over Big Show and Orton. This gets an 87. Triple H gets a big order over Big Show as, but then... To end the show, well, not quite in the show, we get an RKO out of nowhere as it proves that if Orton hits that move on Lesnar, he could, he could get the shock win at WrestleMania. But then, end the show, we have WrestleMania contract signing. Ben Maul, Jericho, and Michaels all do their thing and, you know, basically say why they're going to win the huge main event at the triple WrestleMania between three of the greatest wrestlers in the world. And we're all show this gets a 92, so fun stuff. And Brock Lesnar invented a new move. Um... Maybe he did the uh, stretch muffs right here. Interesting. But yeah, that's it for mo. That's it for the moment. And I'll be back in, in a, just a second with Revolution. All right, and welcome to the first post show, Rising Sun Revolution. Revolution. Uh, wow, that's I didn't realize it was going to be towards the right way. Okay, regardless, let's get rolling as we're live from Grand Forks, North Dakota. As a, as Revolution, the show is back in America, so let's get started. And we start out with Chuck Palumbo coming out, and he is, as you expect, very, very, very unhappy, along with his woman, Raven Rain. As he says, last at Rising Sun Revolution, in front of nearly 40,000 people, I won my match. But nobody's talking about that. All everybody's asking me, I was on a plane for 16 hours, as I was waiting in, the airport in Tokyo for hours, as well as traveling back here. All everybody could ask me was, Booker, 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 Booker. Now let me tell you something, Booker, I don't know why you got in my business, but you better stay the hell, hell out of it. Do Booker come out to a mixed but mostly positive pop? He says, Plumbo, for the past year or so, Saka, I was self-involved. I thought the only thing that mattered was myself and getting to the top on my own. But thanks to my brother. And thanks to going back home, I realized something. Sure, I won the world title last year. But I won five, count them, five world titles, sucker. When I had the fans behind me. And I wasn't such a bitter jerk. But I still have my queen beside me. But going back home, realized, and what it, made, it made me remember, what I should do in this business. And Pombo says, what the hell does that have to do with me? The sucker, you're an asshole. And you're getting too big for your britches, and you need to be reminded that I'm a former world champion, a six-time, 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 six-time world champion on this show. That means I'm still the top shocker. Can you dig that? And Palumbo sort of like laughs and says, no, Booker, you're getting desperate. So you're trying to warn your way back to these fans because you know it's not your time anymore. I'll let you off with a warning. I'm glad my woman doesn't want to go after your woman. But this is my revolution, so stay the hell out of my way. And there's a stare down, and there we go. As this gets a 98, Booker turns face, and there we go. So yeah, um, honestly, there's a bit of a um, like lack of good baby faces outside for like Mike Kidman, London, Styles Trio at the, at the top of the show. Booker wasn't doing much, so there you go. 
And then we have our opening match as oof. Okay, well, sometimes you try things and sometimes it fails. So I wanted to see if Cash and Sharp had any chemistry as partners and if they could do anything in ring together. And unfortunately, they have no chemistry at all. So honestly, I'm not going to do much with this match. This is just a bad match. Like This is just a chunky, discombobulated match as Cash and Keenan Sharp defeat Simmons and Finley in a little over seven minutes when Cash pins Finley with a dead level. It gets a 52. Uh, Sharp gets a 56. Cash gets a 60. Finley gets a 37. Simmons gets a 63. And honestly, that's all I'm going to say about it. We're going to pretend it never happened, and we're just going to move on. I suppose match, the heel celebrate to a 69, but then they'll be off to better things, hopefully, after this. Because <laughs> that was not good at all, unfortunately. Um, anyway, we go backstage where Amy Wilbur was with Paul London as, she, you know, she, she says, you know, you have a big match tonight against Lance Storm, who was in a tag title match at Rising Sun Revolution, but you weren't even on the show. So how, how are you feeling about that? And Paul's like, yeah, you're right. It's a big match tonight. Because, you know, you're right. He was in a big title match, and he's a great wrestler. But Lance Storm, I gotta prove myself every week. And I was on Rising Sun Revolution, which means I gotta prove I'm at your level still. And tonight, I'm going to prove I deserve to be at the top of this business, and I'll do it one match at a time, between facing people like you and defeating you right in the middle of that ring. Because I'll fly sky high, and I'll pin your ass. One, two, three. So, 71, decent promo. I mean, it's still Paul London, but Lance, you know, but still decent promo as putting over the big match between Paul London and Lance Storm later tonight. And then we have a quick match in the women's division as Angel Fox takes on Natty and Hurt, and it's a back and forth match. But Angel Fox takes basically, like, takes complete control of the match as we go on further, you know, after the first few minutes. And eventually, like, Natty gets a little bit of offense in and goes for the sharpshooter, but Angel Fox um, cradles her, picks her up. Angel snap right in the middle of the ring and with a clean victory for the heel. 1, 2, 3 over 99 Hurt as this gets a 54. Angel Fox gets a 57. 99 Hurt gets a 39. Pretty straightforward win for Angel Fox just to get her over as she celebrates after the match to a 64. Like nothing special here, just to sort of reorient the women's division as moving forward, you know, sort of a new cycle with that division. And then we cut backstage where Chuck Colombo is very unhappy and he is like basically pacing around the locker room while Raven Rain is trying to calm him down when in walks Monty Brown. And Monty Brown says, and Monty is basically like, Colombo, we're, we're tagging tonight against Styles and Styles and Ray. And if you think I'm going to let you stop me from wrecking those two fools in the ring tonight, you better keep your head in the game. Because last night, Van Damme, he got lucky against me. But if I'm going to get another title shot, I can't get derailed by you, Polombo. And Paul was like, wait, wait, wait. Why do you think you deserve another title shot? I won last night, Brown. You lost. If anything, after I beat Styles and after we win tonight, nobody can get in my way of another title shot when it's my turn. And like Raven tries to calm her, like tries to calm Polombo, but like say, push her, let me talk to her. And she then she's like, Tomorrow, look. Plumbo's my man, but we can get together, we can work together tonight. I can be your head. I can be your head cheerleader just like I am for Palumbo, but we gotta do this tonight and take care of those two bumps. Brown agrees and says, keep your man's head in the, where it belongs on tonight, not in his dreams. And again, there's a bit of a stare down as this gets a 98. And then we have the official debut of Keith Walker, the pit fighter, in on WC Revolution. As he comes down, he just basically kicks the shit out of Sean Stasiak in a little over three minutes as she as he's basically announced with Tori Wilson as his partner, as of course Wilson. Walker has been fighting in the pit along, you know, training and then alongside Alex Wright the past few weeks. And he makes his debut tonight officially, just like basically kicking the crowd out of Sean Stasiak, tossing with a few suplexes and locking him in sort of like a quasi um, psycho suplex. And then getting pinfall victory here, here on Revolution as this gets a 48. Walker gets a 43. Stasiak gets a 52. And Tori takes to Mike and says, This man, Keith Walker, has, has fought all of the world in underground fighting. I brought him here to WCW because just like Alex Wright, I think I can bring him to the top and torch him and push him towards success because he can prove why he's was one of the most feared men on the underground fighting circuit and WCW will be one of the most feared men sooner than later. So again, putting over like Tori's with Keith Walker and now she has another chart alongside the United States champion, Alex Wright. As this gets a 46 because Walker's not that over yet. 
And then we go backstage where Amy Wilbur is with Gail Kim as, you know, Amy Wilbur, you know, congratulates Gail Kim. But, you know, a lot of women are going to be want another sh- want a shot at the women's title, including the former champion Trisha Sky. And Gail says, last night, I proved once again, I'm still the head bitch in charge of the women's division. And without a doubt, the best women's wrestler on the planet. So, yeah, there's lots of people. There's lots of women who want a shot at this belt. But, Trisha... It's not going to be you because your time at the top is over and it's on a new new business because this is not no longer the division about Joni Lawler, about Trisha Sky, about anybody else walking in here from somewhere else thinking she's not going to be right sent right to the top. No, this is Gail Kim's division now. And I'm going to rule it my way. So again, solid heel, heel promo, but not completely like heel promo uh, from Gail Kim as this gets an 83. And then we get a quick, quick little segment that announced that the Brodown will be live next week at Revolution. As this gets a 25, because Roxy, not that over yet. Then we have a fun little tag team match as European Disunion, the new women's tag team champions after Rising Sun Revolution, take on all that Al- Alyssa Alexander and Lila Befez. And honestly, like, Alexander looks good. Like, she gets some, gets some suplexes and a big spine buster and even brawl a bit with Colt, but eventually. They call and Busick, like, basically wrap Vivez in their trap. And, like, you know, she gets a little bit of offense in, but it's pretty obvious, you know, who's, you know, the European Union are the tag team champions in the women's division for a while. Eventually, Colt wraps Vivez in a submission, and nowhere to go. The young wrestler has a tap out, as this gets a 69. Nice, Colt gets a 73, Busick gets a 57, Alexander gets a 47, and Vivez gets a 42. And then after the match, as the faces, like, roll the ring, Music and Colt take the mic and says, What you just saw in that ring was just two Fraulein's who couldn't compete against great athletes such as European News Union. We proved over the past month why we are the greatest tag team in women's wrestling, and now we have these titles. They will never leave our waist. Any woman can come take us, take them off of our waist, and they will fail, because we are greatness personified. 82, really solid promo from Nikita Colt. And Busek as, I mean, they're really, like, top stars of the women's division. And then we go backstage where um, Jamie Noble is backstage. And basically he runs into Ken Anderson, who's doing backstage stuff. And Anderson, like, you know, says, hey, get out of my way. Only, like, look, get out of my way. And we'll have to fight. And we'll have to kick your ass. Like, right, kick your ass. And Noble's like, right, got lucky. I could make you tap in five seconds, but I'm going to let you pass. And they're a little stare down as they both like look like they're going to fight. But eventually, Noble says, it's not worth it. I need to get another title shot, and you're not going to wreck it for me. And then he walks away as Anderson sort of smirks and says, well, good luck, buddy. And then he walks away as this gives a 76. And then we have our match, which is friggin' awesome. I mean, it's Langston and Paul London in 2005. Like, Paul London's like a great high flyer, one of the better workers at this point in the game. And Lance Storm is freaking Lance Storm. So like, you know, we start with it with technical stuff, you know, but London eventually fights out of that. London even like hits a big dive early on uh, to take advantage, but he uh, goes for like probably one high flying move too much and Storm takes over. London gets to play face in peril, you know, really work and sell to get the crowd behind him. Eventually Storm does lock in the Canadian Maple Leaf, but London gets to the ropes barely. Um, Storm goes to lock in again, but London throws him to the outside, like, you know, sort of like blocks it and as part of the, like, blocking it, kicks Storm to the outside, hits a big plancha, tosses, tosses, and, but as he's, like, you know, he tosses Storm back in, but he sort of argues with April Hunter at ringside, and as he comes back in, Storm wipes him out with a super kick, puts his foot on the ropes, one, no, April Hunter holds um, London's foot down, and one, two, three, Lance Storm picks up the victory here on Revolution as it gets an 85. Lance Storm gets an 83, Paul gets an 85, because these guys are great. And both match, of course, as you'd expect, NW, I mean, not NW, but Mike Osmond awesome comes in, do a little bit of a beatdown, but out of nowhere, Dean Malenko and the tag team champions, America Samani, come down to make the save to run off Storm and Awesome for the moment and help London up. And again, because, like, you know, obviously, NW will be focused on Nitro because they're the tag champions and Russell Wars and Nitro focus show, but they're not going to completely off revolution just because, like, they're, it's not part of the cycle. But again, Michael, of course, the veteran presence makes a save, and there you go. As this gets an 80, and then as we come back from com- com- from commercial, ah, words are hard sometimes. Um, you know, London is backstage thanking the 
uh, thanking AMW for the help, along with Malenko, when out, out, out walk, up walks the Toronto for Blake Kidman in front with April Hunter on, on his arm and Mike Osmond and Storm sitting beside him, ready to go, you know, ready to commit some violence. And, you know, London and AMW are ready for a fight, and Kidman says, Wings all says, no. I'm not here for a fight. I'm here for a warning. You see, London, I kick your ass so many times I don't even remember. And you too, as he picks up AMW, my ma- my guys, the most powerful man in the business and the best techno wrestler in the business, could wreck you and take those titles again. Just like that, if they weren't so unlucky. But we're giving you warning. Storm, Lance, my man Lance, he beat you, London, and that should be it. But if you don't stay out of our business, and you can even keep those tag titles for a little while until we remind Teddy we're still the best tag team on the show. But if you don't stay out of our business, well, Paul, there's not going to be any happy ending for you, and AMW, those both will be back around my man's way sooner than you can think. And hey, maybe I'll kick your ass, London, and then go win the world title all in one night. Who knows what happens when the triumvirate, when the triumvirate do what they need to do. So a bit of a stare down as, you know, AMW, you know, are about to say something, but London stops them. And there's a bit of a stare down as then we go to the next part of the show. As sort of building up, you know, Kim and London still don't like each other, but Kim and's, you know, wanting to move on to do business. But it's Roman Austin still wanting their shot at tag titles and all that fun stuff. Then we go to our main event, which not that, let me see here. Okay, so um, four points, 10 points, 14 points divided by four. So should be at an 87 or so. Um, what knocked it down? Okay, Ray, poor gimmick, AJ Styles a little fatigued. And yeah, okay. I mean, I get, but still a really good match as, you know, it's Money Brown, Chuck Colombo, AJ Styles and Ray Jr. So you can sort of see how this match goes. And it's AJ and Ray basically taking turns, you know, playing face in peril over and over again like you know aj you know ray you get knocked around by money first then palumbo then aj eventually gets the hot tag you know he does a little bit of offense hitting a big dive on money brought him with palumbo a bit after their match at the rising Ten revolution but eventually palumbo you know raven run does some raven rain uh, distracts aj just enough for palumbo to take advantage hit some power moves tag back in money eventually money brown you know hits a big pounce but ray makes a save at the last second they brawl aj and palumbo come in Everything breaks down, um, you know, and it looks like, but it looks like um, Booker is, it looks like Columbo's actually going to hit the win after hitting the full throttle on Ray Mysterio Jr., but Booker T comes on the ringside and actually pulls Palumbo out of the ring while the ref is dealing with um, AJ Styles and Money Brown fighting on the outside. Bra- Booker and Palumbo start fighting. Ray comes out and hits, Ray, event, takes, uh, Ray recovers, hits a big dive onto, onto Palumbo, and the fight continues. And eventually the ref calls for a double count out, not sure who's legal, and not carrying anymore. As it gets an 84, Plumbo gets an 88, Money Brown gets an 84, Reggae gets a 90, AJ Styles gets an 88. And post-match, Plumbo and Booker continue to fight to the top of the ramp. And Monty is very upset in the ring, and he, like, actually, like, looks like he's about to toss a ref, the ref, before W's officials, like, break him apart. As he just, like, takes a stare down at the, at the fighting and Kidman, at, at Styles and Ray at basically the, the bottom of the ramp, and he looks very mad as the show closes, as it gets a 97, and overall the show itself gets an 89. Good, good stuff. Mike Awesome doesn't like Natty Neidhart, okay? I mean, Mike, you know, like, it's 2005, come on. <laughs> uh, Tank's down southwest, and so is Sean Walton, okay, interesting. Um, TJ, Tremax, Carp, BJ Black, Crazy Boy, Joint Term on. Anything else of note? Well, HW hit a big show, so we'll see what they did there. Small time in wrestling from Vermont involving Yin Run. Sure. Um, but what did I want to show you guys? Um, no, that, not this. All right. Um, oh, right. That's thing. Okay. So, as noted, I'm playing WWE right in the last couple weeks up until WrestleMania. Um, so that means, yeah. So, so here's basically the lineup for, well, well, first let me go over the last show as far as SmackDown goes. So SmackDown was basically like the WrestleMania preview show. And it started with a funeral for the Undertaker going awry, as of course the Gals of Bruja made up of Vampiro, Kane, Lefaithon, also known as Batista, and 
Ariel Belmont, also known as Shelly Martinez, did a funeral for The Undertaker a couple days before Vampire's match against Undertaker at WrestleMania when The Undertaker, of course, did Undertaker things, came back, and that was that. So that, at 87, we had a um, Molly Holiday for Jillian Hall in 70, as but then we had you know Survivor Showdown, official competitions announced, so that got us 56. Then we had promos involving Jericho and Rigo and HBK Big Show before their triple threat um, WrestleMania preview match. We had in an eight-man tag with all four teams involved in the four-way tag match at WrestleMania with Lance Cannon, Christian York, and TNA defeated Devon Dubois, Shelton Benjamin, and Saturn L. Snow in a 61. Then we had an edit angle video, basically, you know, putting over their big match at WrestleMania. Then in a bit of a preview of both the triple threat IC title match and the six-man Hollywood stunt street fight, we had Scott Hall, JBL and Scott Steiner defeated Christian, Rico Consino, and Steve Richards in 76. We had a post-match fight until McFoley came down with a barbed wire bat. Then we had, and, you know, again, it's Russell Moving in Hollywood, so we had Steve Austin as Gladiator. Then we had an Orton Lesnar video, preview their match. Then in the main event, we had Chris Benoit and Triple H defeating Chris Jericho and William Rico and Shawn Michaels and Big Show in a 92. Then, of course, we had a post-match WrestleMania preview brawl in a 99 and a 93. So, as you can see, I'm trying to book WrestleMania, like, WWE well. And... To preview, like again, we, this is for sort of the official lineup. As main event, it's Chris Benoit versus Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho, Undertaker versus Vampiro, versus Vampiro, Christian the IC Champion versus Scott Hall versus JBL, Big Show versus Triple H, Edge versus Angle, Randy Orton versus Brock Lesnar, Mick Foley, Stephen Richards, and Riku Constino versus Diamond Dallas Page, Will Regal and Scott Steiner in a Hollywood stunt show street fight. We have CM Punk versus Val Venus, and then a four way for the tag champs, Tess and Albert, face off York and Cade. Dubois and Benjamin, and also on Saturn. And then we have Team Amber and Rob from Survivor, which is Molly Holly, Jackie Gade, and Cherry Slice, versus Team Jenna Maraska from Survivor, which is Jillian Hall, Veronica Vane, and Amber James. So there you go. And as far as other stuff going on, to first go over, of course, our stuff, we had, let's see here. Okay, so we had uh, the first at TV for NWA Wildside. We had Siaki and Raymond, if you'd cross and Drago. And Sonny Siaki is yeah, getting there. Like, he'll be probably part of the main roster sometime in this game year. We had Chance Profit defeat Bobby Lashley. That got a 49. We had Jimmy Raven, Trevor Rhodes, and Stone Mountain defeat Kai Graves, Ortiz, and Daz in a 61. And Cassio Riley and Chasing Cross defeat Lazarus and Claudio. And Claudio's up to a 57. So, yeah. And then they had Hardcore Hell in front of 8,000 people. Okay, sure. We had Rise and Drago defeat Bobby Lashley. Uh, Bobby Lashley's Hell is a bit of a ways to go. We had Sunny Saki defeat Jay Z Dazen in 56. We had Kent Cole and Kendo Suzuki defeat Dagon Braze and Matt Cross. Everybody sells some ways to go over there. Uh, Jimmy Rave and Trevor Rhodes and Snow Mountain defeat Adam Ortiz, Kai Graves, and Claudio. Again, Claudio 61, Jimmy Ray 63, Kai Graves 59. And then Chains, Jason Cross defeat Chance Profit in a 75. So there you go for that. And then for the weekly house show, Sunny Saki defeat Defeated Dagon Briggs. Uh, let's see here. Tom Zuma Howard defeated Claudio to retain the NWA North American title. Rick Michaels defeated Matt Cross. Uh, let's see here. Akabona defeated Cassie Reality, K. Gurgs, and Chance Profit to retain the NWA National Heavyweight title in 63. Sure, why not? And then Lazarus defeated Jim and Rave. And then in our women's dev fed, we had Moho Saka defeated Tracy Trailer as Tracy Trailer is slowly getting better. We had the non-gay partners of Sydney Rod Madison and Tracy Brooks defeat Sydney Rogers and Miss Maley. Miss Maley's sort of getting there, but everybody else still needs some time. Then the 100% girls defeat Allison Danger and Michelle McCool, and Kay's retained the AWQ tag titles. And of course, that's Becky Bayless and Miss Schiffster. We had Annie Social Drawing, Thank You Rocked in a 63, and Kim Nielsen defeated Ariel to retain the AWQ title in a 57. And then if we go to HWA, we had the first the HWA Weekly Show, which had Andy Douglas, Rocky Romero, and Jorge Estrada to be Barry Brevern and Club Deluxe in a 47. We had the Cyrus Squad defeated Corey Ka Castle and Jimmy Jacobs for the HWA Tag Titles, which were um, basically vacated when they moved to, to a team to OVW. Um, so there we go. Joel Grunge defeated Alex Caliber in a 57. Uh, Ray Steele defeated Alex Shelley for the HWA TV title in a 48. And then Master Tracker defeated Ricky St. Page in a cage match in a 56. And then for the end of ends near, we had Dustin Lee defeated Kaviev Atwana, who is a regen who the WWE signed a while ago. We had Dana Rodimer, Ricky Romero, and Horace Roddick defeated Barry Brown and Club Alex. We had Cyber Squad defeated Corkassel and Jimmy Jacobs. We had Joe Brunch defeated Excalibur. Joel Brunch is also a regen. 
Then we had Ray Steele created Alex Shelley, Ricky Shane Page, and Anna Douglas in a cage match between the HWA TV title and A50. So interesting as far as that goes. Uh, for OVW, OVW had the weekly loop. We had Sarah Strzok defeat AJ Sparks. Shaggy Shudo defeat John Cena. Yes, this is a match that happened in this version of reality. Uh, Tony Mavlik defeat Chuck Taylor, Chuck Taylor in a 61. Uh, let's see here. Rob Conway and Joy Ryden defeat Steve Bradley and Daniel Pluter in a match of four people of various eh. Uh, Shane Taylor Taylor defeats Lizzie Borden, retained the Divas title in a 49. And Joey Matthews defeated Ricky Costino for the OVW Heavyweight title before it brought Rico up. So there you go. And then for the Saturday show, uh, Shaggy Tito defeated John Cena again. I'm sure this will be mentioned in, in this version's timeline when Cena's finally up on the main roster. Uh, let's see here. Dee Bradley and Danny Pooter then defeated Rico Costino and Trent Baker for the OVW Southern Tag Titles in 57. And then Joey Co- Matthews defeated Rob Conway. So interesting stuff. Um, just as a note, before we go to, like, you know, set things up, so Big Show Triple H is at a 93, Edge Angle is at an 87, Hollywood Stunt Show is at a 76, Icy Tile Storyline is at a 76, Lesnar Orton is at an 87, Punk Venus is at a 46, uh, The Win Survivor Showdown is at a 62, The Tag Titles is at a 57, Taker Vampire is at an 86, and The World Title Storyline is at a 95. Meanwhile, for our storylines, at least the ones that are continuing, so, uh, Gives the Darkness is at a 75, the T- now TV title storyline of Truth, Toil, and Lepin is at a 74. The new Brother Ray vs. Chosen Few feud is at a 76. Cruiser Stuffs is at a 56. Goldberg Fry Savage is at an 83. The Kaz Yang vs. Hart Evans feud is at an 81. O'Hare Toro is at a 75. Eddie Canyon is at an 89. And then Beautiful Violence is at a 62. Uh, the women's tag title buildup was at a 69. JL, Gail Kim joining all our Trish guys at a 86, and obviously I'll be moving Kill Kim out of this. Wright Nobles at a 78. Um, Sharp Anderson, so that's two feuds, but I'll, which I'll probably move up. Uh, Styles, Kim, and Ray is at an 84. The World Title feed, which will, of course will be changing here in a little bit, is at an 86. Booker T. Colombo is at an 85, and The Tribe Rising is at an 83. So fun stuff. Again, sort of an interesting show rebuilding things up after the pay-per-view. Honestly, a little bit, like, I push through things a little quicker than I would usually, but, you know, that happens. Depends on the week. And how much, like, how much I actually write out the promos. Um, just depends. You know, sometimes I push through things, sometimes I don't. It all depends. But regardless, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and like. Comment below what you're enjoying and not enjoying. And, of course, subscribe to your channel for plenty of TW 2020 content, such as this, my new Ring of Honor series, my new Japan 2004 series, and who knows what else might pop up. But that's it for now. So talk to you later, and adios. Have a good one.